that the Lord has made, we shall rejoice and be glad. This is the day that the Lord has made, we shall rejoice and be glad. All right, if you're glad to be alive, come on, tap that screen. If you're glad to be alive this morning, my God, this morning I woke up, I was thanking the Lord for his grace because his grace is sufficient. When I got up this morning, I was thanking him for his mercies because his mercies are new every morning. I got up this morning thanking him for his joy because the joy of the Lord is our strength. All right, when you're ready, say ready. Let me speak a blessing over you and your family. When you're ready, say ready. I want to speak a blessing over you and your family. Good. Lenore is ready. Mona Lisa is ready. Sam is ready. Aisha is ready. Tara is ready. Good. Rosa is ready. Ruth is ready. All right. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. One more time. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. All right, well, blessings to each one of you. Those of you, we want to thank you for joining us uh, this Sunday. Uh, the Lord gave us a powerful word. I've been given, yes, thank you, Mona Lisa. I believe and receive, good. I was getting a lot of feedback from yesterday's lesson uh, Sunday morning's lesson, uh, people said they got a whole lot out of the lesson. They took a lot of notes. Uh, yesterday for our Sunday lesson, we talked from uh, the scripture, Luke chapter 15, uh, starting at verse 1, but our foundational text was Luke 15 and 11, and we talked about a loving father. So those of you who did not get an opportunity uh, to be on yesterday, you can go uh, at your own leisure and watch the video from yesterday. How many of you got a chance to watch the video? Uh, and how many of you got a chance to be in service with us yesterday? How many of you got a chance to be in service with us yesterday? I got a lot of powerful feedback from uh, people all over. I want to thank God for that. Good, Sam. Good. Excellent. 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 Good, Mona Lisa. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Let me share with you. I did both. I watched it a couple of times. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Lenore. Thank you, Aisha. And thank you, Lenore. I saw that you did a watch party too. So thank you for that. Let me tell you uh, a couple of things. I was praying for each one of you uh, the other night. I got up about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and I was calling out each one of you name by name uh, to the Lord. Good morning, Felicia. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So I was calling out your name to the Lord. I want you to write down a couple of things the Lord gave me. I want you to write down a couple of things the Lord gave me for me and for you. Number one, he said, tell the people that uncommon favor shall be extended unto them. Write that down. Uncommon favor shall be extended unto them. Tara, uncommon favor shall be extended unto you. Sam, uncommon favor shall be extended unto you. Aisha, Mona Lisa, Regina, Lenore, Ruth, uncommon favor shall be extended unto you. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. He said, people, Lenore, will go out of their way to be a blessing unto you. He said, people will go out of their way 
to be a blessing unto you. What does that mean? That uncommon favor will be extended unto me. It means, Ruth, that people will go out of their way to be a blessing unto you. So I want you to make that part of your confession. Every day I just want you to say, uncommon favor is extended unto me. People go out of their way to be a blessing unto me. Okay? So make that a part of your confession every day. Uncommon favor shall be extended unto me. People go out of their way to be a blessing unto me. Okay? Another thing the Lord told me, he said, tell the people that whatever they do to keep thanking me, to keep thanking me, uncommon favor shall be extended unto you, Dina. People will go out of their way to be a blessing unto you. Good. Excellent. A Mona Lisa, the Lord said, whatever you do, keep thanking him. The other night, Lenore, I woke up early and as the Lord was speaking to me, after he spoke, I went back to sleep. But when I woke up again, my mouth just kept saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, there you go. There you go, Felicia. Yeah. Keep thanking him. Keep thanking him. Lord, I thank you. Come on, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. And as you keep thanking him, Rosa, doors are going to be open. As you keep thanking him, Dina, ways are going to be made. As you keep thanking him, Sam, walls are coming down. As you keep thanking him, things are opening up unto you. He said, whatever you do, keep on thanking him. In everything, give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Don't you dare complain. Give him thanks. Don't you look to the left or the right. Give him thanks. Good morning, Valerie. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Good morning, Willie, Tempest, Tina, Timber. Hallelujah. So number one, the Lord said, uncommon favor vow will be extended unto you. Number two, he said, people will go out of their way to bless you. Number three, the Lord said, Keep on thanking him. Good morning, Renee. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Okay. As you come on, Renee, I was just sharing with the people that the Lord said, <clears throat> I was praying for each one of you individually. As I prayed for you individually, I called out your name. And these are the things the Lord gave me for us. He said, tell the people that uncommon favor will be extended unto them. Number two, people will go out of their way to be a blessing unto them. Number three, whatever you do, keep on thanking him. I go back to work, so I want to be interacting while I'm getting ready, but I'm here. Good. Father, we thank you now. As Tara goes back to work, thank you that you have ordered her steps. Thank you that you will use her as a light to her surrounding. Thank you, Lord, that your favor is upon her. Your favor causes her to be distinguished even in that place. We thank you that yokes are being destroyed, burdens are being lifted. Thank you that no weapon formed against her shall prosper. Thank you that you have anointed her tongue as a ready rider. Thank you that she is bold. You said the righteous is bold as a lion. We thank you now for a productive day in Jesus' name. Okay, so number one, he said uncommon favor shall be extended unto you. Number two, uh, he said that people will go out of their way to be a blessing to you. Number three, whatever you do, keep on thanking him. Keep on thanking him. And number four, he said, get ready for a heap of testimonies. Get ready for a heap, H-E-A-P, a heap of testimonies. Get ready for a heap of testimonies. Get ready for a heap of testimonies. Get ready for a heap of testimonies. Good morning, James. Blessings. Unto you, the Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Good morning. Blessings. Pray that you had a wonderful weekend. Okay. Those of you just coming on, want you to know this weekend, I was praying for each one of you individually. And these are the things that the Lord gave me. He said, tell the people, number one, he said, tell the people, number one, that uncommon favor will be extended unto them. Good morning, Evangelist Bryant. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. He big, gigantic. No one will. Good. There you go. Awesome. 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 Okay. So those are uh, some of the things the Lord gave me concerning you. Okay. So get ready for uncommon favor to be extended unto you. Get ready for uncommon favor to be extended unto you. Get ready for people to go out of their way to bless you. And whatever you do, keep on thanking him and get ready for a heap of testimonies, okay? And lastly, James, the Lord said, tell the people to stay in expectation. Write that down. Lastly, the Lord said, tell the people to stay in expectation. No matter what you feel, no matter what you see, no matter what you heard, stay in expectation. Don't let nothing take you out of expectation. Stay in expectation. No matter how you feel, no matter what it looks like, no matter what you hear, stay in expectation. Good morning, June. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. All right. So let me go over it again. Those of you just coming on, I was praying for each one of you individually. I was praying for each one of you individually. I was calling your names out to the Lord. And he told me, tell the people this. Number one, uncommon favor shall be extended unto them. Somebody write down all of these. Number one, uncommon favor will be extended unto them. Number two, he said people will go out of their way to bless you. Number three, whatever you do, keep on thanking him. Whatever you do, keep on thanking him. Good morning, Kiana. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Pray that you had a wonderful weekend. Good morning, Yvette. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Good morning, Yvette. Good morning. Hallelujah. Okay. So number one, he said uncommon favor will be extended unto you. Somebody put them all together. Number two, people will go out of their way to bless you. Number three, whatever you do, keep on thanking him. Number four, get ready for a heap of testimonies. And number five, stay in expectation. So five things the Lord gave me for each one of you, put them all together. Number one, uncommon favor will be extended unto you. Number two, people will go out of their way to bless you. Number three, keep on thanking him. Number four, get ready for a heap of testimonies. And number five, stay in expectation. Stay in expectation. No matter what you hear, no matter what it looks like, no matter how you feel, stay in expectation. Because expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. Expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. All right, good. Come on, if you receive those five things, if you receive those five things, tap that screen. Come on, tap that screen if you receive those five things. The Lord gave me for each one of you. Tap that screen if you receive those five things.
uncommon favor shall be extended unto you. People will go out of their way to bless you. Thank you, Mona Lisa. Keep on thanking him. Good. Get ready for a heap of testimonies and stay in expect. Good. Thank you, Mona Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Good. I receive all five. Good. Excellent. 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 Good morning, Yvette. Blessings to you. All right. Do me a favor. Put down the number eight. Put down the number eight. Eight is the number of new beginnings. Put down the number eight. Eight is the number of new beginnings. Okay. Eight days left. Eight days left. James, eight days left. Mona Lisa, eight days left. Renee, eight days left. Evangelist Bryant, eight days left. Dina, Felicia, eight days left. Valerie, eight days left. Rosa, Lenore, and our 30-day consecration. How's everybody doing with the consecration? You have done great. We have made it 22 days. 22 days of consecration, 22 days of setting ourselves to seek the Lord. 22 days of setting ourselves to seek the Lord. Fasting, praying, and giving. 22 days. Today is day 22. We have eight more days left. Okay. We have five expectations and we're holding fast to that. We're staying in expectation. Okay. All right. Let's go today. Let's go. Uh, Second Kings. Second Kings. Uh, we're talking about the woman whose son has died. Let's let's go to that and let's finish that and let's uh, finish it off in chapter eight. But let's go to Second Kings chapter four. Second Kings chapter four. Second Kings chapter four. Five is grace. Yes. Yes. Second Kings chapter four. How many of you have been blessed by this story here? How many of you have been blessed by the lesson of Elisha and the Shunammite and her husband? How many of you have been blessed by this story here? Uh, the Shunammite. And Elisha in the husband. Okay. Okay, good. 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 All right, let's go. The last time, good morning, D. Arthur. Pray that you had a wonderful Father's Day. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Good. Been very blessed. Good. Excellent. Okay, last time we talked. Okay, we were in. Feels good to go over the details and really get something. Oh, excellent. Good. Excellent. Excellent. That's why we're, yeah, we're taking our time. Okay, let's go. Uh, 2 Kings 4 16. 2 Kings 4 and 16. 2 Kings 4 and 16. Okay, and he said, okay, now that. The woman and her husband has been a blessing to the man of God. Now the man of God is about to speak into their life. Okay. The woman. Okay. And her husband has been a blessing to the man of God. They have made room for the man of God. When you make room for the man of God, get ready to be blessed. Write that down. When you make room for the man of God, get ready to be blessed. I can take you throughout the scripture. The Philippian church was a blessed church because they made room for the man of God. The Philippian church was a blessed church because they sold into Paul so many times. Even when Paul was in other cities, Lenore, they always looked out for Paul, okay? They always looked out for Paul. Thank you, June. Thank you, Mona Lisa. When you make room for the man of God, prepare to be blessed. Now they have made room. The man of God said to Gehazi, he said, uh, call the Shunem woman, call her, okay? 
Verse 16, and he said, about this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, nay, my Lord, the man of God, do not lie unto me. Okay, so she was blown away. What do you mean? Write this down. Write this down. Write this down. You shall receive a prophet's reward. Come on. Good. You shall receive a prophet's reward. How many of you have ever heard of that? How many of you have ever heard about receiving a prophet's reward? How many of you ever heard? How many of you ever heard that? Okay. How many of you ever heard that? Okay, good. Rosa said, okay, what does that mean? What does that mean? What does it mean to you? What does it mean? I don't want you just to be familiar with it, but I want you to know what it means. Matthew 10, 41. Write that down, please. I'm not sure. Good. At least you're honest. Most people don't know. Most people are not. We've heard it. I've heard it most of my life. I've heard it most of my life. I didn't know what it meant. Rosa said, Jesus visiting the sick, giving them the sick helping. Okay. Matthew 10, 41. Matthew 10 and 41. He that receiveth a prophet, he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. He that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Did she receive him as a prophet? Did she receive him as a prophet? Yes or no? Did she receive him as a prophet? Was he a prophet? Was Elisha a prophet? Good. Yeah, Elisha was a prophet. She received him because she said, I perceive that he is a holy man of God. Remember that? She said, I perceive that he is a holy man of God. Good. Okay. So the first step is you've got to recognize who is in front of you. Write that down. You've got to recognize who is in front of you. Don't get caught up in the flesh. You need to recognize by the spirit who is in front of you. Because you may be entertaining someone that is a prophet. You may be entertaining someone that is a prophet. You can't take lightly, oh, that's so-and-so. You need to recognize who is in front of you. Good, June. Good. She recognized this is a man, a holy man of God. Okay. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Okay, good. Good. Now she received him right. Okay? Write this down. She received him right. Come on. Let's put the scripture to work. She received him right. Okay? Did she receive Elisha right? Did she receive Elisha right? Did she receive him right? Thank you, June. Did the woman and her husband receive Elisha right? Did they receive Elisha right? Good. Good. Good, Renee. Good. Yes. Good. 
Therefore, Renair, therefore, Lenore, what can they expect? What can they expect? Because they received the man of God right, what can they expect, June? Evangelist Bryant, what can they expect? According to Matthew 10 and 41, Valerie, what can they expect? Good, a reward, good, a pro good, a prophet's reward, good. That's what they can expect. Why? Because they recognized who was in front of them. Now, if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. All right, let's see. Let's see what she received, okay? Okay, you ready? Verse number 16. And he said about this season, according to the time of life, thou shall embrace a son. And she said, nay, my Lord. What did she receive? What did she receive? A child. Not just a child, but what? A son. In biblical times, a son was very important. All children were, but the son spoke of legacy. The son spoke of carrying on the name. Okay, She received a son. What was that son? What was that son? What did the son represent? What did I tell you? What did the son represent? Two things. What did the sun represent? The sun represented two things. The sun represented two things. Let's see who knows. Okay, legacy. Okay. What did the sun represent? Two things. I'll give you one of them. The sun represented her future. The son represented her future and also the son was her greatest desire. Okay. Her greatest desire. It was something, Tara, that she had desired. She didn't tell anyone. That's why. That's powerful. Good. Where's my bomb squad? That's powerful. That is why, Mona Lisa, when the prophet spoke to her, Lenore, when the prophet spoke to her, she said, don't lie to me. Thank you, Mona Lisa. Thank you, June. When the prophet spoke to her, June, when this prophet spoke to her, Regina, Sam, the author, when the prophet spoke to her, Aisha, that is why she said, don't lie unto your handmaiden, because that was her greatest desire. That was something that she desired. That was something she didn't tell anybody about. That was something she didn't even speak about because she figured it would never happen. I need to talk to somebody this morning. There is something that you haven't talked to anybody about. There is something that you don't believe will ever happen. That is the thing that God wants to do for you. Hear me, you haven't talked to anybody. Matter of fact, you have pushed it so far back. My God, you used to talk about it years ago. You used to dream about it. It was your greatest desire, but you feel like it will never happen. You feel like you are too old now. You feel like this. You feel like that. My God, can you imagine? Listen to the scripture. Listen to verse number 14. Listen to verse number 14. The prophet says to her, Ruth, what can I do? Can I speak to the king for you? Can I talk to the captain of the host for you? She said, I'm good. 
I dwell amongst my people. Listen, verse 14, and he said, what then is it to be done for her? Gehazi answered, verily she has no child and her husband is old. She has no child, Dina, and her husband is old. In other words, she wants a child, but there's nothing they can do to make it happen. Her husband is old. He's past the age to produce a child, but yet that is her greatest desire. Hear me this morning. Somebody believes that they are too old. Somebody believes that you have missed your best time. Somebody believes you have missed your best season. But the Lord said to you this morning, say not that I am too old. Who am I talking to this morning? The Lord said, say not that you are too old. I will renew the years as an eagle. I will renew your strength. I will give you new life. Say not that you are too old. Say not that you have missed it. Say not that it's over. Behold, I do a new thing. Lord have mercy. Oh my, Baboboko Sheke. Helanamokorama Shete. Oh my God. The enemy's trying to make you think you're too old. The enemy's trying to make you think you're at the end. You're not at the end. You're at the beginning. Behold, I do a new thing. The man of God's servant said, her desire, she has no child. Father, we thank you for the seed sown. We thank you for the seed sown this morning. Now we thank you for the consistency and now we speak increase, abundance, and favor over Sam in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, somebody declare, God shall satisfy me with long life. Come on, satisfy me with long life. Declare it, the Lord shall satisfy me with long life. The Lord shall renew my life like the eagle. Hallelujah. My God, my God. Somebody need to declare that. God shall set good, June. God shall satisfy me with long life. Good, James. Come on. Good, Mona Lisa. Come on. Good. Hallelujah. My God. Yes, Lord. Your true wealth is your health. Your true wealth is your health. And since you're going to live long, you might as well live Life healthy. Lord have mercy. Good, June. Good, Renee. Good, Regina. Okay, so notice she, good, Tara. Notice, Tara, that they recognize who he was. They recognize who he was. Now they receive the prophet's reward. What is a prophet's reward? When a prophet can speak what you desire. A prophet's reward is that he decrees what you desire and it comes to pass. A prophet's reward is when he decrees what you desire and it comes to pass. A prophet's reward is when he decrees what you desire and it comes to pass. He said about this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. She said, nay, my Lord, thou man of God. I know you're a man of God, but come on now. Don't lie to me. Don't play with me. I've been disappointed before, and I don't even want to talk about this. I gave up on having a child. I gave up. And now you dare to speak something like that? Don't play with me. There you go, Lenore. There you go, Rosa. There you go, Ruth. I will live a long life, wealthy, healthy, helping people, taking care. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Okay, now watch this. Okay, number one, 
They recognized who he was. Number two, they made room for him. Number three, he began to decree a blessing over their life. Number one, they recognized who he was. Number two, they made room for him. Number three, he decreed a blessing over their life. He did not pray for them. He decreed it. A prophet's reward is when he speaks to your desire. And God honors that and brings it to pass. Okay, watch this. We're reading the text. Thank you, Renee. Prophet's reward when he decrees what I desire. Come on. Is that what happened? In our text today, did that happen? In our text today, Lenore, did that happen, Regina? In our text today, did that happen? They recognized who he was, what he decreed, right? You will have a son. You'll have a son. That was her reward. She got what she desired. She got what she desired. You, most people, June, spend their life trying to get their needs met. But God wants to give you your desires. If you believe that, somebody say, yes, Lord. James, don't spend all of your years trying to get your needs met. God wants to give you your desires. Sam, God wants to give you your desires. Mona Lisa, God wants to give you your desires. June, God wants to give you your desires. Tara, God wants to give you your desires. Dina, Valerie, Wendy, God wants to give you your desires. Lenore, Rosa, Ruth, God wants to give you your desires. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Felicia, God wants to give you your desires. My God. God wants to give us our desires. Where does our desires come from? Good. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Okay? That means that his desires become your desires. His desires become your desires. And guess what? God is the one who made you. Therefore, he put it in you. Just like I love the color blue. The Lord put that in me, to love the color blue. That's always been something in me. I love blue. I love blue. I love blue. When it says delight yourself in the Lord, that means his desires are your desires. That means when you give your heart over to him, you allow him, okay? And then our desires come from him and our desires come from the word, come from the word. Whatever God wants for me, I want for me. Somebody write that down. Whatever God wants for me, I want for me, okay? How do you find out what he wants for you? Read the word. How do you find out what he wants for you? Read the scripture. The scripture tells you what God desires for you. His will is that you don't perish. You should desire that. His will is for you not to perish. You should desire that. He takes pleasure in your prosperity. He wants you to prosper. You should desire that. With his stripes, you are healed. He wants you healed. You should desire that. Your health shall spring forth speedily. He wants you healthy. You should desire that. My God, the scripture tells you what God desires for your life. He said that when you obey him, Renair, when you serve him, Lenore, you will spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure Rosa, he wants you to live in prosperity. 
Rosa, he wants you to live in pleasure. Hallelujah. You should desire that, Aisha. You should desire, James, the author, Lois, Jennifer, Lisa, Felicia, Minister Terrell, Diamond. You should desire what God desires for you. Hallelujah. He wants you to have a sound mind. You should desire that. He wants you to walk in divine protection. You should desire that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And don't you settle for things that God does not desire for you. God doesn't want you in lack. Don't settle for it. God doesn't want you worried. Don't settle for it. God doesn't want you full of anxiety. Don't settle for it. God doesn't want you uh, upset. Don't settle for it. Don't settle for things that God does not want for you. God wants you to have more than enough. Let me say it again. God wants you to have more than enough. So don't settle for, I just want my needs met. I just want my needs met. Father, we thank you for Valerie sowing this morning. We speak back over her. Increase abundance and favor. Thank you for her consistency and sowing to your kingdom. You said in your word, you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. Hallelujah. He wants you to have more than enough, Mona Lisa. So you got to stop praying. I just want enough for me and my four. No more. I don't need a lot. I just need enough for me and my kids. That, that's the wrong prayer. That's the wrong prayer. That's the wrong prayer. He said, I bless you to be a blessing. Your cup shall run over. There you go, James. Yes, yeah, stop settling for things that God doesn't want. Stop thinking that you are humble. Stop thinking you are humble by saying, I don't need that. Money ain't everything. Stop, stop, stop trying to be humble by saying that. You need enough money to fulfill the assignment that God has given to you. And whatever amount of money that is, whatever amount of resources that is, you need it to carry out your assignment. All right, so watch what happens. Watch what happens. Let's see, verse 17, 2 Kings chapter 4, 2 Kings chapter 4, 2 Kings chapter 4, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 17. Let's see what happened. The man of God spoke it. Verse 17, and the woman conceived and bared a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her according to the time of life. Okay. It happened. Number one, they recognized who he was. We perceive he is a holy man of God. Number two, they made room for him. They added on a room. They put four pieces of furniture in that room. They made sure he was comfortable. They made sure he had a place to stay. Every time he came through that city, he didn't have to worry about eating. He didn't have to worry about a place to stay. He didn't have to stay at a hotel. They made room for the man of God. And because they did it, the man of God said, what can I do for you? Because God never does anything just for one person. It's never about you. It's about the whole. Hear me. Okay? It's never about one individual. It's about everyone. So if God leads you to sow into somebody, it's not just about them. It's about both of you. You will be blessed by sowing into them. They will be blessed, but it's never about just one person. So not only, Renee, not only did Elisha have a place to stay, but God gave this woman and man the desires of their heart. Do you see? 
Do you see that in the text, Lenore? That everyone got blessed. Everyone got blessed. Write that down. Everyone got blessed. Did you see that, Dina? Everyone got blessed. It wasn't just the man and woman being blessed. It wasn't just the prophet being blessed. They all were blessed. Hallelujah. They all were blessed. Good, June. Good, June. Hallelujah. They all were blessed. Come on. That's why you know it's God's system, because it works for everybody. Write this down. God's system works for everybody. God wants everyone to be blessed. He wants everyone to be blessed. He wants everyone to be saved. He wants everyone to be whole. Come on. His system works for everyone. It just doesn't work for certain people. It just doesn't work for people with titles. It just doesn't work for this or that. God's system works for everyone. Hallelujah. Good God Almighty. Anybody glad about that? Anybody glad that God's system works for everyone? Hallelujah. Whether you're short, whether you're tall, whether you're female, whether you're male, no matter what color you are, God's system works for everyone. Hallelujah. All right, let's find out. Watch this, Dina. Watch this, Aisha. Verse 18, when the child was grown. Watch this. When the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers. He said unto his father, my head, my head. And he said to the lad, carry him to his mother. Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knee till noon and then died. Okay. Watch this. The enemy will try to take your future. Hear me. The enemy will try to take your future. Come on, declare it. Satan, you will not have my future. Come on. Come on. Somebody needs to say that. Somebody's under attack right now. You need to declare, Satan, you will not have my future. Satan, you will not have my future. Somebody's going to say that. You mean your future. Somebody's going to say that. You mean your children. Somebody's going to say that. You mean this or that. But you need to say, Satan, you will not have my future. The enemy, good. Good morning, Shekinah. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Good, good. Come on, good, good. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. We're living in a time. So much is going on with our children. Good. So much is going on with our children. I, I, I see that declaration, Tara. Good. So much is going on. This young man, his head started hurting. The father said, take him to his mother. He sat on her knee and then he died. Love you. Just because, Shekinah, just because the Lord blesses you don't mean the enemy will not try to attack you. Hear me. Just because the Lord blesses you doesn't mean the enemy will not try to attack you. Let me say that again. Just because God has blessed you the enemy will not try to attack you. Notice, notice, the enemy was not happy with what the man of God decreed over their life. You know why? Because he could not stop it. He could not stop it. Write this down, please. It will be formed, but it will not prosper. I'm about to shout, it will be formed, Rosa, but it will not prosper. It will be formed, Tara, but it will not prosper. It will be formed, James, but it will not prosper. It will be formed, June, but it will not prosper. My God, it will be formed, 
Lisa, but it will not prosper. It will be formed, Sam, but it will not prosper. It will be formed, Renee. It has to be formed, my God, but it will not prosper. Do you understand that? It has to be formed, Regina. Write this down. It has to be formed to show you that it will not prosper. It has to be formed to prove to you it will not prosper. Come on. The scripture cannot be complete if it's not formed. It has to be formed in order to prove to you, Lenore, that it will not prosper. They have to talk about you. They have to plot against you. They have to try to stop you. The attack has to come to prove that the word is correct. The word says it will be formed, but it will not prosper. Hallelujah. Let them talk, but it will not be prosper. Let them plot, but it will not prosper. Let them attack, but it will not prosper. It has to be formed, Renee but it will not prosper. So guess what? Do you think the enemy is going to sit back while God is blessing you? Do you think the enemy is going to sit back while God is blessing your children? No, he's going to try to act up, but he has no authority. He has no authority. He has no power over you. You just got to stay in the spirit. You've got to stay thanking God. You've got to know that it's already done, that the enemy has no authority over you. He only has it with your permission. You've got to give him place. In order for the enemy to have place, June, we have to give him place. How do you give him place? Worrying. How do you give him place? complaining? How do you give them place being mad? How do you give them place being bitter? How do you give them place being angry? How do you give them place holding unforgiveness? How do you give them place? You open up a way for him to come in. There you go. There you go. Don't give him place. Don't give him place. So watch this. Let's see what this woman did. Watch this. Follow me. Let's see what this woman did, Shekinah. Her child has just died. Okay, watch this. Verse 21. And she went up, she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God. She took her son, put him on the bed of the man of God. Okay, remember what she told him. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. Don't tell me God's going to give me a son. So now she gives the child back to the man of God. Puts him on the bed. Okay. She shut the door and went out. And she called unto her husband. And she said, send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the donkeys, that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, wherefore will thou go to him today? In other words, there's no special time. There's no spe He's not having Wednesday night Bible study. He's not having morning worship. Watch this. She said, it shall be well. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Drive, go forward, slack not thy riding for me, etc. In other words, put the pedal to the metal and don't stop unless I tell you to. Don't stop unless I tell you to. Go and don't look back. Verse 25, so he, she went and came unto the man of God. She knew where to find him. And it came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said unto Gehazi, his servant, Behold, yonder is that the Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her. 
and say unto her, it is well with thee. Notice what he's saying. Ask her, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? Okay. And she answered, it is well. Was it well with her child? The servant said, is it well? Was it well with her child? It was well with her. It was well with her husband. But she said, it is well with her child. Good. No. But why say it? She said it was. Why did she say it was well if it wasn't well? Why? There you go. A faith confession. She was making a faith confession. Let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. Come on. She was making a faith confession. Don't say what you see. Say what God says. He said, let the weak say I'm strong. When you're weak, say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. Say I'm rich. Come on. Why are you saying you're on a fixed income? Say I'm rich. Why are you saying I'm on a fixed income? I only get one check a month. Say I'm rich. Let the poor say I'm rich. Are you going to say what you see? Are you going to say what you experience? Are you going to say what God say? Hallelujah. Watch this. She said it as well. Verse 27. And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her. And the Lord has not, has hid it from me. And have not told me. Let me tell you this. Notice. Every prophet does not know everything. Okay. A man or a woman of God does not know everything. So don't be fearful of man. Okay. I remember when I was young. I was at a church. And there was a, a prophet there. And they were saying. I know ev everything. God is showing me everything. God doesn't do that. We see right here. God hid it from the man of God. Does God show things to people? Yes. But God is not going to show anybody all of your business. He did not know. He knew she was vexed, but he didn't know why. Okay? So stop fearing man. Don't fear man. God reveals things. But ultimately, God reveals things to help you. God is not trying to harm you or hurt you. Okay? So don't let people scare you by telling you all these things, okay? I remember as a kid being scared sometimes because I thought God was going to show that person everything about me. You see in the text, he didn't know. He said, God has hid this from me. God has hid this from me. You see that, Rene? He said, God has hid this from me. Watch this. Verse 28, then she said, did I, watch this, listen, did I desire a son of my Lord? In other words, did I bring this up? I didn't bring this up. It was my desire. I didn't bring, you started talking about this son. You started talking about this child and look what happened. Watch this. Did I say, do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, gird up thy loins, take my staff in thy hand, and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. If you salute thee, answer him not. If they salute you, answer him not again. And lay my staff upon the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him and told him, saying, The child is not awake. 
And when Elijah was come into the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. He went in, therefore, and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the Lord and went up and laid upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and put his eyes on his eyes and his hands on his hands. And he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times, completion. And the child opened his eyes and he called Gehazi and said, call the Shunammite. So he called her and when she was come in unto him, he said, take up thy son. Then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and looked up her son, and went out. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, your future is about to be resurrected. Your future is about to be resurrected. Your future is about to be resurrected. Some of us have made bad choices and decisions. Some of us have assassinated our future. But God says, tell the people this morning, your future is about to be resurrected. I don't know about you. I've made a lot of bad decisions. I've made a lot of choices, a lot of bad choices that has assassinated my future. Am I talking to anybody? Will anybody be honest? We've made bad choices and decisions to assassinate our future. Don't you know one bad choice can set you back years? One bad decision can set you back years, Lenore. One bad move can set you back years. One, just one, can set you back years. But God said, there you go, Sam. Decre declare it. My future is restored. Come on. Somebody declare that. My future is restored. My future is restored. My God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My God. Father, we thank you for another seed from Sam. Father, you know his heart. You know where he's at. And as he's sowing this morning, you promise to be a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. My God, he is sowing. Father, I speak that his future is restored. The seed he just sowed, I agree with him that his future is restored in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, can we... Rejoice with Sam that his future is restored. He just put a seed on it. He said, I'm not just going to say it. He put a seed on it. Come on. Can we rejoice with him that his future is restored? Spirit, soul, and body. Every area of his life is being restored, put back together. Hallelujah. God is putting it back together. Hallelujah. God is putting it back together. My God, some of you, your life has went in many pieces, hallelujah, and people have told you, you will never recover, but you shall recover, Renair, you shall recover, Rosa, you shall recover, Dina, you shall recover, Tara, you shall recover, my God, I see God putting the pieces back together, my God, some of you, your lives were broken into many pieces. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I can see a bunch of pieces all over the floor and I see them supernaturally coming back together. I see them supernaturally coming back together where there were once a lot of pieces. They are coming together. Your mind is coming together. Your family is coming together. Your joy is coming back. Your strength is coming back. Your health is coming back. The pieces are coming together. 
Lord, I love you. 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 Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. All right. We are over time. If you are blessed this morning, tap that screen. We'll go to chapter 8. We'll go to chapter 8. We'll go to chapter 8 tomorrow. Chapter 8, Renair is going to confirm. Chapter 8 is going to confirm what we just said. What we just spoke over our lives, chapter 8 is going to confirm it. 2 Kings chapter 8, verses 1 through 6, Shekinah. 2 Kings chapter 8, 1 through 6, Regina, Aisha is going to confirm what we just spoke over our life. The pieces are coming back together every area of our life. Every area of our life is being restored. Every area of our life is being restored. Some of you had to do without a car. Some of you had to do without a home. Some of you had to do without a place to stay. You know where you were. God says your life is being restored. Your life is being restored. Even through the process, you were being humbled. Even through the process, you were being humbled. You were being humbled through the process. Now you know how it feels to go through the process. And God is going to use you to minister to other people because you sat where they sat. You know what it feels like to have your lights turned out. You know what it feels like to not have a car, to have to catch a bus, to have to depend on other people to take you places. You've been there. You know what it is to be in a house, no food in your cupboard. You know what it is to be in the middle of a room, sitting in the floor, not knowing what to do, not knowing where your help is coming from. You know what it is to go through that dark place You've been there, my God, and you thought it was about you. It wasn't about you. God is going to use that dark place. You thought in that dark place you were being set aside, but I'm here to let you know you wasn't being set aside. You were being set apart. Hear me by the Spirit. Everything that happened to you, God is going to use it for his glory. Everything that happened to you, God is going to use it for his glory. Hallelujah. 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 All right. I got to go. Remember, do something today to increase your value. Number two, keep seed in the ground. Number three, Keep a joyful attitude. Number four, walk in righteousness. Number five, awake to righteousness. Number six, expect divine intervention. Number seven, be fruitful. Number eight, multiply. Number nine, replenish. Number 10, subdue. Number 11, stay connected. Number 12, know that uncommon favor is about to be extended to you. Number 13, know that people are about to go out of their way to be a blessing to you. Number 14, whatever you do, keep on thanking him. Whatever you do, keep on thanking him. You're about to get ready for a heap of testimonies. And number 15, stay in expectation. Stay in expectation. No matter what it looks like, no matter how you feel, no matter what you hear, stay in expectation. Expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. Once again, as we leave today, want to give you an opportunity, those who will, if you want to sow into this ministry, uh, feel free to go to the website, go to the Cash App. You can do it. 
Want to thank all of you for your love, for your support, uh, prayers, financial. You are helping us reach many people. Yesterday uh, was our first stream. Uh, we're going to uh, do some more, which allows us to be on multiple platforms at the same time. Okay, We've been working out the kinks. But we're about to go. We, we did it yesterday. It was okay. But we're going to have it where it's going to be on about almost probably 20 to 30 platforms at one time. I shall. Shalom to each one of you. Shalom to each one of you. We are in day 22 of the consecration. Be strong. Stay strong. Eight more days to the end of our consecration. Shalom. I receive it, Rene. Shalom to you, Rene. Sh Shalom to you, Aisha. Shalom to each one of you. There is nothing missing. There is nothing broken. There is nothing missing. My God. Shalom to you, Tara. Shalom to you, Felicia. Shalom to you, Rosa. Shalom to you, Ruth. Shalom to you. Regina, nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. Shalom to you. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. Come on, write that down. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. Speak that over your mind. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. Speak it over your finances. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. My God, shalom over you, Dina. Shalom over you, D. Arthur. Shalom. There is nothing missing. Good, Mona Lisa. Nothing broken. Nothing lacking. In my health, nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing lacking. Shalom. That's what shalom, peace means. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing lacking. So when you see someone and say, peace be unto you. Nothing missing. You're saying, I'm praying that there's nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing lacking. Good. Excellent. All right. We got to go. Have a great day. Tune in tomorrow. God bless you.